Hey, and we're back. Um, this video is going to be a little different. I want to talk about uh, some the difficult, harsher side of chess, and more specifically, my relationship with me and chess. So, um, what you see up here in front of you is my YouTube uh, community page where I posted three days ago. I'm officially done. This entire channel will be deleted soon. I'm a loser beyond words, and my brain is an exceptional example of shit mud. <laughs> Today's games take the cake for showing how hopelessly useless I am. No one watched anyway. Peace. Well, that last part's true, but if you've been following me, the couple people who do, I didn't make this channel for the world. I made it for me. Now, that being said, everything I wrote here, I still am feeling. It's, it's, uh, I've been in what I like to call my chest depression. It, uh, it was all kind of, uh, what's the word? It's difficult to talk about this stuff because, you know, when you look at someone's channel, my favorite content creators, yeah, we get to see their blunders, but more than anything, we get to see their huge successes. And unfortunately for most of us who didn't grow up playing chess as kids, going to tournaments and chess schools and chess camps, the reality is, is we are going to experience way more downs than ups. And I'm putting this out there so people can see the darker side of how this affects me and um, what kind of was the catalyst for this episode of my chest depression was six. I played six blitz games. Now, if you've been following at all, I'm a decently strong chess player in the higher percentiles. I just crossed 2000 on Lee Chess in Rapid and I was approaching 1800 in Blitz. Now, at this level, you know, I, I should know how to play. I'm gonna show you the six and only six games I played in one entire session. And it was like a different person was sitting on the chessboard. Like, it is literally like I gave my account to someone who's just learning to play. I don't know what was wrong with my brain. Um, on the sixth game, I was on tilt, but for the first five, I was actually very relaxed and just, you know, taking them on the chin. But looking back after the sixth one, that kind of the sixth game made me fall apart. And I've had a chance to look at all six, and they're worse, each one worse than the last. I do not know what was happening. I was sick at the time. But the day before I was sick and played fine. So I, I don't know. I can't I cannot even blame being sick. It is atrocious. It's pathetic. I feel like a loser. I <laughs> Hence this post that you're seeing in front of you. I'm on the verge of deleting every video on my channel and just deleting the channel. Like, I don't need anyone to see this, I'm embarrassed. Uh, but here it is, here's my struggle. So I thought for myself and everyone out there who also battles, this was uh, what I call a spectacular F-tard session. And I'm gonna show you all six games and give you a feel of just how bad, I, like, it was like a different person. So yeah, I had one, two, three, four, five, six in a row. And then these next ones, more losses to compound my brutal chest depression and tilt. But we won't even go into that. So six games. We're gonna bust into the first game. I'm gonna change the layout here to grab. There we go. Okay. So, in a lot of these openings, I'm trying to play the Jabava London or the Carol Khan, it seems. And uh, I'm usually very successful with most of them. And if you've watched any of my content, like, 
I more often than not play with 95 plus percent accuracy in the openings and I usually am dead even or an advantage coming out of the opening. In these games, I threw away games in average of 15 moves or less. So here's a Jabava London and we're just going to burn through them. I'm not going to spend too much time. So this is all pretty standard. And then, okay, first inaccurate move. Let's him do this. Okay, so now I'll move my queen twice. Not great. Now we got the check. He goes there, and I decide to castle. So. Ooh, I got some tea here. Okay, so here, right here, biggest blunder of the century. This is hanging everywhere, and I decide to do the worst move possible. Opponent doesn't see it. I still don't see it. <laughs> I instigate the fork. <laughs> game over. Moving on. Second game. Another Jabava London, but not really because he goes into this some um, gambit. I think it's the England gambit. I don't know. Check. I go here. Now look at this beauty. Made it in eight moves, like a chump. It's like I don't even know how to play. Okay, moving on. Game number three. I play a Carol Con. This is some sort of pan off attack, I believe. So clearly this was a dumb move going here because I just come back. Now here's a real neat moment coming up. Really? The, the minute this... Like, I just don't get it. How can I completely not notice that and get mated? Mated in 15. That was game number three. Let's move on to game number four. Another Carol Con. Some sort of weird advanced in a weird move order. But this is great for black right now. Oh, except for the part where I hang my bishop. So right here. Oh, I should either take or I should move. No, let's just castle. My brain was on, like, just can couldn't do blunder checks. I couldn't. I And obviously, by fourth game, I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Like, come on, get it together, Nick. Let's just make sure you don't blunder. And I'm still blundering. Game five. Another Carol Con advanced. This one, I think I get a great advantage. Let me see. So I'm attacking this, but it's defended for now. But I win a center pawn in the Carol Con. This is huge. And now I'm piling up on this to Bishop, so he needs to defend it, which he does. I decide to keep this threat going. Now I'm threatening to win another pawn or this pawn. Now right here, I could have took this and attacked the queen and won a pawn, or he could have exchanged and I could have grabbed it. But no, I decide to grab the bishop, which okay. Now he's threatening and I have to, if I take this, he's gonna take that. If I take this, he'll take that, vice versa. So I decide to go this way and save the knight. So now I am up a full minor piece. Full minor piece and a pawn. So I decided to defend and bring my queen back. Oh look, a fork on his rooks, but my opponent comes up with a nice move. Exposing an attack on the knight. Now, 
I'm already up a pawn. I gave the pawn back and should just trade pieces, right? Because I'm up a full minor piece. That's the logic. Instead, I'm like, oh, I don't want to damage my pawn structure. And I'm in my head at this moment, I'm like, oh, but don't overcomplicate this. You've really screwed the bed on the last five games. Like, what the hell? Just play simple chess. Take the piece. Let them take your knight. Whatever. I decide to do this for some reason, thinking, okay, well, he can take my knight, but then I'm going to take back with a rook. And he finds this move. So he damages my pawn structure, takes my knight, and then I move my queen here. Again, I could have took this pawn and undoubled my pawns. Instead, I moved my queen and let him take. Now, I get the fork. I could take this pawn. I decide to trade queens and let him take another pawn. So now... Okay, I have a full minor piece, but he's nabbed a few pawns for it. I'm still doing okay. Somehow, I think I need to defend my knight, attack the rook. Not realizing... Well, I did realize my king doesn't have an escape square right now. But I still do this move for some reason. And then I leave my knight. I just resigned here. Because... I can go back to defending the knight, and he's going to push. I'm going to go here, then he's going to push again. I don't even know what to do at this point. So, probably at this point I should just push. He pushes. But now he wins the knight, that's fine. Yeah, I go here. I go here, he takes with check, then he defends his pawn, and I can't take his pawn, he brings his king in, it's just over, so I resigned. Frustrating to say the least, up a full minor piece, piss that one away. Game six, this is where this, I was now tilted at this point, playing e6, b6, Dutch kind of thing. Okay, we're into a Dutch territory. Now here's a great moment. I get a fork on these two pieces. Once again, I am completely winning now. Completely winning. Up the exchange. I, I have great opportunities here. Oh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk myself into a fork square, th not worrying because I know it's defended. But this lets me move my rook here. And my goal maybe is to get my rook here and then here. I don't know. I think that was my plan. But I knew that this square was defended by this, so I wasn't worried. Really? Well, I was realizing that I've lost five awful games in a row at this point. I'm now up to exchange once again, and don't mess this up, Nick. And knowing that it's defended, I still do this. Even though I was thinking about that. Just a retard. I don't know how else to say it. I don't care if that's politically correct or not. It's actually not, it's a f-tard. That's what I am. So, those were my six most awful games I've ever had in a row. I, I, I don't even know what to say about those six games. I lost so many rating points because of that. And then I came on here and wrote this all up. So one thing to keep in mind is three months ago, I put this post. You can't see the full thing in here, but it says, I'm way too hard on myself, so this is an exercise in my own self-support. Not too shabby, I should say. And it's a screenshot of when I hit 1978 in Rapid. I was 28,000th place out of 435,000 players. 91 percentile. I'm obviously not a terrible chess player, but how can I reconcile that with those six car accidents you just watched. So needless to say, I 
was experiencing a lot of self-hatred. Feel just pathetic, like, why do I even try? Like, that many mistakes in a row, that badly, those bad of mistakes. Um, I have no words. Like, I'm speechless as we speak here. And I'm really searching for the words to explain how hard it is on me and I, I can't it's it's savage and I don't know if I should keep playing chess because obviously it's a catalyst for me but I thought it would be a good opportunity to share this out loud for myself that hey we all have our struggles and I might have a higher amount of f tard games than some I know we all have them to some extent, but I think some people have them more than others. And for the amount of effort I put into this game, it's frustrating. And this is my experience 70% of the time when I play chess. So it'd be nice to get that down to 50 or 40, you know? So I don't know what's going to come. I'm going to try to keep just plugging along. But every time I have a run like that, it uh, takes years off the my heart health and my brain health. I wonder if anyone else can relate with this. If you can, drop a comment about it. I'd love to hear your, your dark side of your chess journey. But I think we have to remember that here I'm all anxious and bite my lip. <laughs> I think we all have to remember that, uh, especially if we weren't kids who studied uh, chess when we were younger, if we're you know adults trying to learn this game and progress. I think we have to give ourselves some credit. You know, maybe being sick, you know, was a factor. I had a pretty bad bug. Who knows what it was and. Even though I played well the day before sick, maybe that next day was just out of me, you know? And maybe I'm just having a bad run, more than normal, but I have these a lot. And I also have to realize I still play some good chess once in a while, and while there may feel like there is no progress being made, when, you, when I am sharing graphs like that, I mean, that's tough to say there isn't progress being made. So, you know, I think I have to be realistic about what's actually happening here and not be too hard on myself, which is very difficult for me. I think chess is, uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword for some people. Anyway, I'll leave you with those thoughts. I wanted to share my car accidents with you and my struggles. I'll try to keep plugging along and, uh, yeah. Until next time, appreciate you watching. Cheers.